What's up guys, Steven here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, uh, yes, list day. And today we're looking at the top 10 worst ultra rares in Master Duels. One of the things people have touted that makes Master Duels superior to Duel Links is that it is much easier in Master Duels to build a new deck. Instead of just digging through pack after pack after pack to get the cards you want, you can just simply craft the cards you want. And you can make crafting materials for those cards that you want out of the cards you pulled out of packs that you don't want. Not counting special rarities, for every three cards you dust, you can get one card you want. That's a, that's a pretty good trade. Which means if you open a pack using your gems and you get an ultra or super rare that you do not need, you can, you don't, it's not the end of the world. You can just turn it into materials and you're golden. However, not everything is perfect. There are some ultra rares in this game that are not worth the 30 ultra rare gem things. Stones? I'm gonna look at them. Let's, let's do it. Number 10, Berserker Soul. Draw! Monster Bottle! Okay, I know what you're thinking. Dave, Berserker Soul's not terrible. But <laughs> no, it's not. Would you spend ultra rare gems on it though? Berserker Soul is a really strange gimmicky quick play spell card that reads. When a monster you control inflicts direct damage to your opponent of 1,500 or less, you can discard your entire hand. <laughs> oh boy, maybe, maybe the card is just plain bad. Excavate the top card of your deck, if it's a monster card, send it to the graveyard and then inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Repeat this effect seven more times or until you hit a non-monster card. Cool, you can do at most like 3,500, right? Five times seven is 35. The worst super heavy samurai tech ever. <laughs> Not only do that, but you don't even get to keep the, you don't even get to keep any of the crap you excavate. If you excavate a non-monster card, it just goes back to the top of your deck and then you stop the card. That is, uh, the card's just a gimmicky win con, win con, uh, used uh, very loosely. And, um, I'm certainly not gonna waste the gems on it, cause, uh, it's not good. At best, it's, it's meme -y. So, I almost want to spend the gems on it. Number 9, Sales Pitch. You see this deck? You can fit so many bricks in it. Normal trap card, what do? If your opponent adds a card or cards from their deck to their hand, not by drawing, and only by their card effect, you can't make them draw, reveal one card from your deck and then add it to your hand. But you can't activate its effect or cards with the same name's effect until like uh, the next turn. Basically, if you search Ash Blossom, you can't use it. Uh, although uh, it would have been too late anyway, because they already got their search through. <laughs> the slowest Ash Blossom ever. So why is this? Why is this card bad? I mean, it's it's uh, it's not terrible. It's it's gimmicky. It's slow, but it does add any single card in your deck to your hand, which is which is pretty powerful. If it wasn't a trap card, it it might be almost almost worth playing, but I still don't think you would spend the ultra rare gems on it, especially considering the fact that Max C is in this game. Just spend your gems on that. That's a way better card. I do like though that I could play this in uh, in Palios. Why am I thinking about playing this in Palios? Don't! Number eight, Amazon of Swordswoman. This one's only here because they're trying to punish the Duel Links players who've migrated over to real Yu-Gi-Oh, <laughs> I guess. Welcome to real life. This thing has a continuous ability that makes your opponent take any battle damage that you would take in fights with this thing. So what you're supposed to do is crash it into one of your opponent's big numbers and then they take the damage. This isn't Duel Links. We have a main phase two. This thing is not nearly as annoying to get rid of as it is in that game. And that is even anachronistic to say. So why is this an ultra rare? It's, it's, it's not a good card. Is it just a waifu sales tax? Side note, I'm not convinced that some of the ultra rares in this game are just, uh, they simply decide, okay, every archetype needs at least one ultra rare, so we're just gonna pick one, even if that ultra rare uh, or archetype is really, really bad. Uh, they just all need at least one. I don't know why they would have a self-imposed rule like that. They just don't have to do that. They're the game developers. They could do what ever they want, but uh, that is the only thing I can think of, is that uh, every deck has a minimum number of gems you must spend on it. 
Man, I'm finding about more cards that I've never seen before in my entire life. Double-edged sword. It's it's no moon, mirror, shield, or power of the guardians, I'm sorry to say. You can only control one of these things. <laughs> No, but Mamaha Valio. The equipped monster gains 2,000 attack. Holy shit, that's that's a lot. But both players take the battle damage from attacks involving this card. Uh, so you don't just get to boost some guy up to some absurd amounts and then punch and, and OTK your opponent. You gotta have that risk that you might also kill yourself with it. It's a double-edged sword! This thing also says if you take 2,000 or more battle damage, send this card to the graveyard. It doesn't say uh, that has to be with an attack from the monster equipped with this card, though? So, like, if your opponent just attacks something else, you can they can blow this up? This is not a good card. It's I would still argue that, like, Axe of Despair is a better raw boost, simply because there's not all this weird gimmick along with it. Who plays this? Like, bad Time Lords? <laughs> Number six, Unity! Quick play spell card. Remember that weird series of cards that's got, like, all the Duel Monsters era main characters on it? It's Unity, Yujo Friendship, and uh, and the Trap card. Uh, like, something of the Pharaoh. Yeah, these are, like, ultra rares in this game. Uh, they're all not the best cards in the world. At least Yujo Friendship has some utility in, like, a cheesy reverse burn deck, I guess. Although, in a digital format, you do lose the meta play of, like, sneezing on your hand and then going in for the handshake and getting DQ'd for it. <laughs> So I picked Unity for this entry, because uh, Unity is is just not a good card even in like a, a dedicated gimmick deck to utilize it properly. It just won't, because it's just not very good. Quick play spell, select a monster on your side of the field, its defense becomes a combined defense of everything you got currently. Holy shit. Until the end of the turn. I guess the idea is that through the power of friendship, your monster in defense mode does not die. I guess. Best super heavy samurai tech option ever! That's two, baby! I like the idea that the more of these they put in their deck, the worse their deck gets. <laughs> defense powers don't really matter too much in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, you could build a whole defense deck around, like, uh, d destruction punch turbo and all this other hooey, but it, like everything else in Yu-Gi-Oh!, a defense strategy requires your opponent to be the proactive player, and you never really want that, because you don't want your opponent to be making your decisions for you, because they're just gonna not do that and do something else, and it's gonna foil your plan. So it's it's not a good strategy. So what are you doing here? Oh, you know, just flying around. Flying around? Just flying around. Thwarting my plans? Thwarting your plans? Are you? No. Good, because that'd be bad. How bad? I'd have to kill you. That's bad. Indeed. And like, why wouldn't you just play like a, a trap card or something like Mirror Force if you're this concerned about battle phase shenanigans uh i don't know however i'm sure there's some some gimmick you could do with uh what is it like cypher soldier and but again we're not playing dual links number five crystal girl why is this an ultra rare this card is this card's okay. There's nothing really wrong with it. I'm not sure what deck it's for. Level one, water spellcaster monster with almost no attack or defense. And during the end phase of the turn in which this thing was normal or special summoned, you can add a level five or higher water monster from your deck to your hand. That's slow. It's like a farfa for the legendary fisherman. If you control level 5 or higher water monster and this thing's in your graveyard, you can special summon this thing to your field but banish it when it leaves. So you can tribute summon your next level 5, I guess. What is this for? Like, okay, it's it's clearly just like a weird little engine card. Don't know what deck it's, it's for, but like, whatever that deck is does, does not want to blow. Ultra rare gem thing on a card that isn't part of their archetype. It's a weird tech option for another water deck they're not gonna wanna blow their crap on this. Is it the waifu tax? Why, why? Again, back at it with the cards I've never seen before. Star Mine. Generic level four fire pyro synchro monster. One monster and one tuner monster. Yay. You can only special summon Star Mine once per turn. <laughs> if this thing in its owner's possession is destroyed by battle or card effect, take 2,000 damage and then do 2,000 damage to your opponent. 
Well, okay, so it's a bad ring of destruction. You've activated my ring of destruction! <laughs> this card is not just a waste of your ultra rare gems, it's just a waste of cards in general. This is... This is not good. However, it does have this neat effect where if a monster in an adjacent zone to this thing is destroyed by an opponent, attack or card effect, you blow this thing up and then do the 2k to each other anyway. So, uh, I guess your opponent can't just not attack this thing uh, in order to avoid from taking any burn damage. It also will do it if they attack its next things. The only thing I could think of to use this would be like, I don't know, in Melfi's, when you use Hop Air Squadron and Synchro for this thing during like the battle phase, it's just a, a way to try to deter your opponent from doing anything. But like, if that 2000 isn't going to kill them, they're just going to attack this. There's there's really no reason why they wouldn't, because uh, it's also doing 2000 to you. So it's putting them closer to OTKing you in the literal battle phase you are trying to stop them from having. Imagine going your Wombo Combo Synchro plays and ending on this dumb thing. <laughs> Number three, margin trading. You don't have to worry about margin trading. If you hit that link in my description below to go to your playmat, yes, it brings you to your literal playmat. It has its own website. It's, it misses you dearly. Your playmat is a great website, lets you get custom card sleeves. They are actually really neat. As long as you don't put anything ridiculous on there, you can bring some custom flair to your deck. Go check them out. But no, uh, margin trading, I actually talked about this card before. It's uh, it was like on my 2001 worst cards of the year list. It's, it's, it's bad. Why is this an ultra rare in, in, in Master Duels? Your opponent can discard one card to negate this card's activation. <laughs> I love when they give your opponent the free option to negate a card. Like, they don't even have to blow one of their, like, monster negates on this. They can just pitch their Garnet and it stopped your card. I just don't know why you keep making them do this. It's called Game Balance Gear. Anyway, otherwise both players look at their opponent's d choose one card, and then those two cards go to their owner's hands. So you look at my d take a card out of it, give it to me. I look at your d take one card and give it to you. Okay, so this bad card advantage right there. I used a card to get a card. My opponent just got a free one. Now you might be thinking, but Dave, I'll just give him a garden. Okay, if your opponent's not an idiot, they're not gonna put bad cards in their deck. So it's not like you're gonna give them something that's gonna make them actively lose. Best case scenario, you're gonna give them something like a card that is effectively useless in their hand. That is your best case scenario, or very least, best case most likely. Your opponent could just be an idiot, I suppose. I've, I've played enough of them on stream. Paid actors. But it's still a free resource. They like that Darlington Cobra, for instance. Like, sure, uh, they want to summon it out of their deck, but they don't have to if they got the other dude. What's his name? Or at the very worst, it's a discard for another card effect. Who the hell knows? It's a free resource you're giving to your opponent. Don't do that. Certainly, don't waste your your ultra rare coin things on this. Number two, try and guess. Should be three, because <laughs> that would be cute, I guess. Three's, they're, the order's bubkiss anyway, right? Try and guess is a normal trap card that you use in Nurse Burn and only in Nurse Burn, otherwise uh, this card wouldn't exist at all. If each player has an extra deck, which I love that activation condition. <laughs> what a strange one. Declare one extra deck type of monster, Fusion, Synchro, or XC. RIP links. Both players reveal their extra decks, and the player who has more of the declared monster type gains 3,000 life points. Life points don't matter, so don't play life point gaining cards. Day bad. You can play literally anything else at Forge or Game State, and you'll do good. Unless your Game State is Nurse Burn. Nurse Burn is a stupid gimmicky burn deck that has Nurse Wreck Fuel the Fallen, or a uh, Dark Lord Nurse Wreck Fuel now? Or Bad Reaction to Smoochie. <laughs> Penis! Which turns any of your opponent's life gaining effects into life burning effects. So this effectively becomes 3k burn damage to your opponent if you declare like XC or Synchro. Because ideally you fill your extra deck up with fusion monsters because most people aren't playing 
15 fusion monsters so that at worst case scenario if you have to you could call fusion and give yourself some life points like to keep you in the game i guess because you got to run something so you might you might as well put the fusions in there and then you could play like blue eyes ultimate dragons and stuff just cheesy just fun stuff but why is it an ultra rare matter of fact i built this in master duels to stream and it was so expensive it seems like the more gimmicky a deck is the more weird tech cards it needs and the more likely those tech cards are to be ultras and this is arguably not even a tech card, it's just a required card to play Nurse Burn. Ah! The only thing I think of is they made this an ultra rare so people wouldn't play that stupid deck. It's actually a tax on the gimmick decks. All right, the dishonorable mention is the, the Legacy Pack ultra rares. Just any of them. There's some good ones in there, but a lot of bad ones. You can't dust them, so they don't even they don't even have a function. They're just they're just stupid. Uh, it it sucks to have to craft them if you need them for something. Like they just blow all around. Yeah. Okay, so number two at least made some kind of sense because they're trying to tax a gimmicky burn deck. Not that the card it really warrants being an ultra rare, but they just want people to not play a gimmick deck. I don't know why Remove Brainwashing is an ultra rare. Remove Brainwashing is a continuous trap card that says the control of all monsters in the field returns to their owners. We have Change of Heart legal in the TCG and uh, it was a mind control, brain control. Ah! Chaos control! Creature swap. We have, we uh, the whole Gradles. We we have a lot of a lot uh, of monster control switchy cards, and even in the TCG, this wouldn't be good. Um, its best function is to like give your opponent a kaiju and then immediately suck it back to your side of the field after it's it's like done resolving its summon or no resolve's not the right word because it's not an effect, but you know what I mean. When the summon window has closed and you can no longer solemn warning it th then uh it will go back to your to your side of the field and then you can give your opponent a second kaiju because uh they don't control one i guess and you can play this in something like uh yosenju kaijus to keep bouncing and and summoning and tributing and gimmicking your opponent with the kaijus i guess but that deck isn't good and I wouldn't even go as so far to say it's an obnoxious gimmick. It's just kind of a fun, interesting strategy uh, that requires like a lot of things to go right. So it, it boggles the mind why remove brainwashing is an ultra rare. It's like the world's worst floodgate outside of some cheesy application. I, I don't, I honestly don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have an idea why. I'm I'm legitimately curious. Like, this one's just an oddball. And it's certainly not worth the gems. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys had fun with this one, maybe we'll do a best of, or we could even go look at the super rares. There's a huge pool of those. I, I don't envy my Discord for having to do that one. But if you guys want to see it, I will torture them with that. <laughs> All right, guys. Remember, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time.